Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. I often find myself wondering, shooting from my home location here in Ball 7, as many of you may know, that's my sky conditions, is it worth using a broadband light pollution filter? And uh, quite frankly, I've wanted to put together a test like this for a while now, as I've done some historically, just for myself, for personal use, uh, long before I was making YouTube videos and things of that nature. And basically all signs pointed to it being more worth your time simply shooting broadband targets without a filter or simply with a UV and IR cutting filter. But I thought since filter technology has advanced so much in the few years since I last compared things like this and I had the perfect opportunity, now I've got this IDAS LPS D2, that I could make another comparison and share with you guys the results from this. So that's what I've done. Effectively what we're going to be doing today is quite a non scientific approach to this, just a visual comparison side by side on the screen right here as you can see. I've outlined a few different previews on regions of interest of this galaxy where we can compare them side by side and you can choose what you think looks the best at the same time as I'm trying to make a decision for myself too. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about these two shots now before we actually jump into any kind of comparison uh, and that is that it was taken one week apart the image on the right was the first taken and the image on the left was taken as i said one week after the very next available clear night um, the image on the right was taken with an idas lps d2 the image on the left was taken through a bada uv ir cut filter simply a luminance filter both were taken with the exact same telescope, same mount, same sky conditions. Just visually speaking, nothing looked uh, to be standing out different between the two sessions. And they used the same exact amount of integration time. So both images were freshly stacked up today and processed in uh, effectively an identical manner. We'll talk about that in a moment. But they both contain 45 minute exposures from uh, my Bolt 7 skies now. On the note of processing these two shots, uh, I tried to process them as fairly as I possibly could. So no bias was given to one or the other. I tried to use tools at complete defaults so nothing would skew the results towards uh, one method of shooting or the other. I don't have a horse in this race. I don't really care which wins or anything like that. It'd just be interesting for me to see how my time is best spent on the uh, rare clear nights that we do get. So that's what this is all going to be about. As I said, this is just very basically processed, uh, color calibrated, background neutralized, uh, background extracted, and easy soft stretch is what I use to take it to this state. So any differences in color and things, variances like that are what you would see too if you gave it the same treatment. Um, as I said, nothing's been done. I'm not trying to trick anybody with this. Um, so it is what it is. Like I said, any differences in color are what you could expect to see too if you did this same comparison. So. As you can see on the overview, what we're seeing is uh, the kind of full view of these galaxies, or the same galaxy just shot twice. Uh, and the image on the left has far more yellows, browns, that kind of thing coming through. And we could expect that from the uh, light pollution cutoff profile on the IDES LPS. It's meant to cut off um, high pressure sodium, low pressure sodium, and I think some LED lighting too, even though it's extremely broad spectrum, which inevitably means it's going to cut into that kind of broadband light that we actually want to be shooting. But it's whether that trade off is worth it. And just on this overview, I think it probably is because the color balance is different, but not drastically so. It's not like one image looks particularly weird. I'd be interested in hearing what you guys think about this. Now, as you can see, I've defined a few different uh, preview segments that kind of roughly lined up the same on these two. So if you just move to preview one, as you can see, we're looking at this kind of nebulous region right in the top, uh, the northern edge as we're looking at it, this galaxy. So both are on the screen now. IDAS on the right, effectively unfiltered uh, on the left. And one of the first things I can see uh, is that the star color on both is really uh, appealing, I think. It's not looking strange at all on the filtered one now um what is apparent also is that the nebulous regions so let's say if you can see my mouse pointer this little region here 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 and this large one are far more cleanly resolved on the filtered image than the unfiltered one um there's a change in color balance between the two and it looks slightly brighter on the filtered version so um could be a difference in the auto stretch not certain but uh it does look 
at least to me, slightly more appealing on that shot right there. I am seeing a sharpness difference and with a favor to the left hand side that was shot with the UV IR cut filter where it looks like the small stars making up the uh, kind of sweeping spiral arm structure of this galaxy are more cleanly resolved on the left hand image, at least to my eye. Um, but I can't really put that down to the filter, I would say. I would more expect that to be a seeing variance between the two nights. Uh, this is one of those things that could go either way. I would expect. I'll, I'll have to do more testing to kind of verify that aspect of things. Um, but at least in this region, I'm not seeing anything that would suggest that I should take off that filter and leave it off or anything like that. So back to the overview, we'll just pick the next preview. In order, so preview number two, we're looking at the left-hand side, this kind of western limb of the galaxy. I've highlighted a uh, a kind of a cascading star cluster is what it almost looks like. I know it's probably a cluster of clusters in this galactic, uh, galactic arm. But I thought it might be an interesting segment to uh, zoom in on as it's got a couple of coloured stars that we can see right there. You see this uh, little pair right there. They're equally orange on both of these. Um, this little one right there is well colored on both of these. There's no real discernible difference between the actual star color uh, on the whole. It seems to be more of a background bias on the unfiltered shot that goes towards yellows and browns uh, rather than individual star color, which is interesting. I expected star color to be more severely affected than it is in this comparison. So that's... Um, Full marks to the filter. I think they've done a good job of IDAS with this one. Um, this isn't a particularly interesting comparison on that particular preview. So let's move on now to preview number three. As you can see, this is going to be focusing on the galactic core. So there's the unfiltered on the left and the IDAS on the right, as I've mentioned. This is a, a large difference now in color balance. As I mentioned, um, it's looking more brown, more yellow. Lots more of that kind of broadband segment of the spectrum coming through. On that left shot like you might expect um but that's not to say that the image on the right that's lacking that bit of extra uh, color there looks the worse for missing it um rather i think it looks a little more outlandish and, and interesting visually appealing at least to me i'm not looking for scientific accuracy quite simply i just want to make a pretty image to share with you guys that's really what i'm bothered about so um again on this one I'm probably veering towards the right hand side. I, I like the filtered image more, especially because uh, I don't know if this is coming across through YouTube's compression. I know by the time I've uploaded these videos and rendered them, um, a lot is lost in translation, but the kind of darker segments leading in towards the galactic core, at least the extensions of those seem to be more cleanly resolved on the filtered image rather than the unfiltered one for me and especially the nebulous regions as i've mentioned before they're clearly popping out far 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 more on that filtered image um we're seeing that same sharpness difference so that i guess that's just across the entire frame uh, and probably was a seeing thing rather than failed autofocus or maybe even the filter glass uh lowering the overall sharpness of the uh, the shot as can happen sometimes with really cheap filters but this uh, idas is a really high quality one so i wouldn't expect to see that kind of thing um now if we go on to the last preview that i arranged which is preview number four this is just going to be kind of a short video as i mentioned um what we're looking at here is the southern limb of the galaxy these galactic arms sweeping around and what looks to be um maybe even a reflection nebula or something like that i'm sure someone out there will know exactly what it is what we're looking at but it looks a little bit oval uh, in appearance and uh, i have to say regardless of what it actually is it is more cleanly resolved on the filtered image for sure uh, it looks like there's almost two times the amount of signal actually made it to the sensor on that one right there um there's another nebulous region just a little bit further up at the uh, top edge of this shot right there and again that's more cleanly resolved on the filtered shot so uh, another win right there i have to say given that these were both the exact same integration time they don't really look it i think we're getting more effectively uh out, out of each minute spent shooting the night sky when using this particular filter which is 
completely com contrary to what I'd found in previous tests just a few years ago where, uh, you know, it made gradients easier to deal with, having a light pollution filter in the path, even a good quality one. Um, but overall signal on a broadband target like this was diminished. Um, this effectively is showing the op opposite, I would say. The filtered image, for me, takes the win on this one it'd be really interesting though to hear what you guys think uh having extra sets of eyes on this uh i've been of course just talking my way through it and things like that and it's kind of distracting um but if you've noticed something uh, different throughout this uh comparison i would love to hear it if you took a moment to share a comment with me that'd be absolutely fantastic now this is just a short video, as I mentioned. I almost didn't make this at all. It was more just for me to uh, compare things, but I thought some of you out there might find this interesting. So uh, anyway, with that, I'm going to wrap things up and uh, leave you until the next Clear Skies, which hopefully aren't going to be too far away because we've been suffering some really pretty dreadful weather. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> right now in this country, it's been awful. Um, maybe that'll change soon. Anyway, until then, guys. Thank you very much for watching uh, and giving all your support in all the ways that you do. And until we speak again, look after yourselves and hopefully clear skies.